Hvad skal jeg gøre med? We're back with A-level chemistry. This time we're on a new unit, unit two. We're on module one. From yes, this book. Wait, that's not right. Wrong book. From this book. Absolutely. It's a lovely green thing on the front that does stuff. So it's all about organic chemistry. It we'll is. start off with alkanes. Now uh, from GCC you uh, sort of use this but with the easiest form, which is the hydrocarbons. What does that mean? Well, that's a compound with carbon and hydrogen only. Nothing else in it at all, it's not very exciting. Then you can have different types of this. You can have saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons. What would that mean? Well, saturated would mean only with single, single bonds and unsaturated with double bonds. Go ahead and remember this. Saturated starts with an S, so single, unsaturated, doesn't, so it's the other one, double. Absolutely. And then again, there's even more things, and these are new and scary words. Yes. Aliphatic and, and alicyclic. Sounds terrific. It's not. If you just think about the second one, cyclic. Yep. Yeah. Cyclic compound, something like benzene with double bonds alter alternating with a. Oh, he is drawing benzene. Well, I'm drawing benzene. Um, and single bonds, something like that. And the other one is just. It's just a straight chain. Straight chain. Sort of what you did on at GCSE. Yep. Medicines nearly always have something cyclic in them. Yeah, if you look at the um, chemical compound for something like uh, paracetamol, that's what I was looking for. Um, stuff like that, yeah, like ibuprofen and all that sort of cyclic stuff, stuff in there. Yeah. Now next we have the um, functional groups, which is stuff that you can attach onto this to make it not a hydrocarbon but something else, and we'll go on to the naming in a minute. Yeah, there's quite a few examples of this. You could have you an OH on the end or something like that. And what a functional group is, it's something that gives the compound its chemical properties. Yes. Different functional groups do different things compared to other stuff with different functional groups. They do. And that's what that means. Which leads us nicely into homologous series. Yes. Homologous series is a set of the same thing like alkanes or alkenes, and every successive set will, ha will differ by CH2. So the first alkene will be X, the second alkene will be X with one extra carbon and two extra hydrogens. And there's a formula for this for both of them, but first go through that. We'll alkanes. alkanes first. Alkenes we'll come on to later. And that's CN H. 2n plus 2, where n is the number in the set, so if you're looking for the, the third it would be C3H6 plus 2, 8. Yeah. And that would be it. And that would be a hydrocarbon. And that will help you with naming it, but you need something else to name it as well. Yes, we know the uh, first ten names of the homologous series for the alkanes. And that goes something like this. The methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, and decane. And you might need to know them, or you will need to know them, you should remember them in the table. But now let's go on to actually naming all of them and all of the shortcuts and how to do it. Yep. Back again. We are. We're combining page 104 to 107 in the book. It's we all are. about naming. Before we can do that on one take. So we will. We will. All right. And the first page just talks mostly about these top two, yep. although the table's on the next page where it talks about these two here. And how to name them. There's a few things you need to remember. Yep. Like I went before, the homologous series, how many carbons there'll be for alkanes, you'll use that. Yes. You need to learn that. So it's the methane, ethane, propane, so on and so on and yep. so on. You need to remember. Um, alkenes are very similar. Except they end in the word e, e and do. there's a double bond. Yes, and you have to say where that is. So if we look at this example here. Yep, yeah, okay. What you've got to notice about this one is if it, this could be flipped and drawn this way, so it's carbon, double bond to carbon. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna write on the, all of it. But it'll be flipped around. And it would be exactly the same. So that it's actually on carbon one, this yeah. double bond. You need to always start with the size of the double bond double bond in. Yeah. Also something to remember, you should always count the longest chain, because sometimes it's branches. Yes. 
So, just something there, because you might trip up and think this might be on carbon 3, but it's not, it's on carbon, carbon 1, one. flipped. Yep. Yeah. Just something to mention. Yeah. Um, and then it goes on to other things. Yes, we have halogenoalkanes, alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. Yeah, these all have different prefixes and prefixes and suffixes. Prefix something at the beginning of the name, suffix at the end of the name. So if we start at the top, where we've actually already done, these all end in ain. Yep. So that's the suffix, and these all end in ean. So that's the suffix. Now these ones are prefixes. They start with special names. Yes. And it would be fluoro. Chloro, iodo, and bromo. I'm just going to put chloro, but you just got to remember they're all very similar. They all end yeah. in the row, but it's. And you'd, you'd say which one it is. You'd say like one chloro if it was on, on the first, first one. one. If there's more than one, it would be di chloro if there's two, tri if there's three, but that's very rare because it's really hard to do. Yeah. But that sort of thing. Then down to an alcohol. They all end in ol, o l. Yeah. That's another suffix thing. But. The OH doesn't have to be at the end. It normally is, but it could be in the middle, it like in here. And you'd have to say 2 ol because it's on carbon 2. Yep. And again, be careful flipping it round if you need to. And you have an aldehyde. A C double bonded to an O to a H, and it's at the end. Yeah. And these always end in AL, A L, A L, like this. A bit confusing. I'll just sort of split it up so it yeah. looks like they're connected. Yeah, they're not. This is a whole different thing. Ketones is very similar, though. It's where the carbon is double bonded to an oxygen, except it's in the middle, so you can't have another hydrogen. Yeah, because it wouldn't fit. It's only four bonds. And it has its own suffix, which is own. Yep. And then finally, the carboxylic acid, which ends with oic acid, like ethanoic acid or something. And this is also always at the end. Yes, because it's got the double bond to O and then single bond to OH. There wouldn't be enough bonds in the middle. That's right. So that's why it's that. We, have you noticed we, we've drawn four different examples on the side? We have, and we're going to go through them all now. I'm going to name them right now. Alright, let's do it. I'll so, we'll start up here. This is quite a simple one. This is a hydrocarbon, like we spoke at the beginning. And it's an alkane, as there's no double bonds. Yes. How many is there, Triv? There's four. So, using the homologous series, that is. Bute. Meat. Oh, bute, yes. Ain. So, it ends in ain. Our uh, prefix, suffix. So, that's that. So, there we go, down one. Okay. Again, we've got four carbons, so it's going to be butes. We have, but there's something at the end which is different. Looking at, look our, at our table, table. it's an aldehyde and it ends in L. Yep. So that would be... So it's butan... L. Butan L. Like that. Like Simple that. like that. Just like that. So we go, then, to the top right, like before. Remember, well, we didn't mention the double it. bond. So we're going to start from this side, really. Yes. But there's also something else. The chloro in it as there's well. There's a chloro in it as well. Now, we spoke the chloro would be the prefix it goes before. Yep, it's on the second carbon, so it would be 2-chloro bute 1-ene. And that's how you name them. Bute 1 Sort of do a little e. dash thing in the middle there. Like that. Like that. Yeah. We have a final example down final here. Final example. Now, this one has quite a few things. as two bromines. Now, there's something very special about the halogens, if there's more than one type, you have to name them alphabetically. Yeah. Some people think they name them in reactivity order, but that makes sense. But it's not quite. But you don't, that's not what you do. So B comes before C, so it would be the bromo part first. Yeah, it would. They're both on carbon 2, and because there's 2, it's dibromo. Yep. So 2, two dibromo, di 1 chloro, butane. Now, you count from this side because this is the side where there's stuff. You seem to do that every time. Yes. If you say to have to at the end. It takes a bit of practice yeah. to get used to how to name them. But follow these rules and you should be okay. What we're going to do now is going to think of a much harder example. We're going to give you a few seconds to do it on your own at home before running through it. Yeah. We'll put it up in a sec. Let's go. That's right. We're back. We have made a harder example. Yep, yeah, we've made a practice question. We're going to give you the chance to go through it on your own, then we'll run through it. Yeah. So, so uh, hit the bit of chance to write it down, just press pause and give it a go. So, that should be enough time for you to pause it and hopefully have a go. Now we're going to run through the way we would do it. In blue. In blue. So what's the first step, Wayne? Well, what I would do is, I don't like the way this is done. I would draw it and display it like the rest of it is. Yeah, I'm going to keep it all consistent. Should let's say about a C2H3. It's not in alkane formula. In fact, it's not even in the alkene formula. 
that's because the amount of bonds carbons have. They have four bonds in each carbon, there's only three hydrogens, and that's not enough. So it must be a double bond though, it must be. It must be. That's something that's hard to realise if you don't draw it out, yeah. which is why I like to draw it out. We mentioned last time you should always start with the double bond. So this would be carbon one. It would. Um, and then another thing, you've got to try and make the longest carbon chain you can. So you can go one, two, three, four, but you can also go one, one two, two, three, four, five. And because that's longer, because it's longer, we go for that one. That makes this one separate. And that's called a side, side chain. chain. And we went before three, four, the monogamous series. It's only got one carbon. So that's meth. Yeah. And these are alkyl groups, so they're given the name methyl, ethyl, propyl, all that, and so yeah. on. But this is methyl. And that'll be a side chain just like the chloro and the iodo. Our functional groups. Now they all go in alphabetical order. So we start with those ones first. So because this is carbon then. one, you've got one, two, three, four. Makes that four chloro. And then the next one's iodo and it's on the fifth carbon. So it's five iodo. Then we hit the methyl group bit. It's on carbon three, which is three methyl. And we've got a state where, now we know it's a, it's a theme because it's unsaturated. We've got to know how many carbons there is. One, two, three, four, five. We said that earlier. There is five. That makes it pent. So it's pent. And then where is the double bond? It's on carbon one. Pent one e. Mm. That's quite a long name. They, we made it so we hopefully it won't get much harder than this in the exam. exam yeah. So it's about as hard as you're going to get. Yeah, they do like to write a bit in. It normally like we did there, where you have to think about it being separate. Yes. And it's often the longest chain, actually. That bit. Yes. Hopefully, you got it on your own. If not, hopefully we explained it okay for you. Yeah, we did leave out the um, me file chain bit, but these are revision videos, so you should have done this anyway. Yes. So let's crack on with the course. All right, let's get to the next part. Back again. This time we're going on all about formulas. We are. I should remember from Unit 1 we mentioned empirical formulas. And molecular formulas. And these both apply with organic compounds. They do. Um, which brings us on to the formulas of yeah. stuff like alkanes, alkenes, all the different homologous series. You mentioned earlier the formula for alkanes, which is Cn, H, 2N, plus 2. There's another one, which you should remember from GCSE also, which is the one for red. alkenes, which is just for that plus two, it's Cn, H, 2N. There's an extra one you need to remember for this. And that is one for alcohols, which is Cn, H, 2N plus one, and then an OH. That one makes quite a lot of sense, you explain what's that? Yes, um, you'll notice it actually has the same amount of hydrogens as an alkane, but with an extra oxygen. Yeah. You'll notice. But you write it like this because the OH is together, that is the functional group, is the O to the H. Yes. So you write it in this form, but that is alcohols. There's quite a lot of ways to write all of these compounds we spoke about. First one we spoke about, we, you can write them in display formula. Uh, That's when you write them out. I think we'll use uh, butane as our example. Well, yeah, we should, yeah. Okay, so I'll just start with red. So that's what we were doing before. When we were naming things, there's four carbon takes of butane, and then you have all the sticks, which would all have hydrogens on. That takes ages, so we're not going to do that. Not in the video, no. Um, Next you have structural formula. Yeah, this is a new one. This is sort of writing everything in the order that it is. So, so the CH3 C there. H3. This is CH2, but there's two, two of them. them. Yeah. So you normally write that like this. CH2. With Bracket two. two at the top. And then there's another CH3. There it is. But because this is at the opposite end to this one, you don't write these in brackets and put two, yeah, even though there is two, because they're at either end. Because you write it in the order that there are, but this is also quite long-winded, and there's another much quicker one. Which is skeletal formula, which is new to you. It is. Um, it's one entirely done with sticks. Yes. Now, so basically you get rid of all the hydrogens. A stick means a carbon bonded to a carbon. So if we do butane, there's a carbon bonded so to a carbon, carbon, carbon bonded to a carbon bonded to a carbon. And that's what butane looks like in skeletal. Yeah, so you think of every sort of corner, I guess, if you imagine that one there, this would be a carbon, that would be a carbon, that would be a carbon, that would be a carbon. And because it has four bonds, all the rest of the bonds will be taken up by hydrogens unless otherwise stated. Yes. Now, if we have an example, if we imagine we have a double bond here, yeah. um, you'd have to get rid of that hydrogen and that hydrogen. Um, but if you have a double bond there, 
how do we express this in Skeleta? We won't we won't bother about this. This you just you just write CH two and then so on. Yeah. But here, you represent that with a second line. A like second that. line. As long as it's where it is in this, so the double bond can't be here because it's not. Yeah. And that's how you express double bonds in skeletal form as a double line. And there's quite a lot. We can actually um, just use skeletal form to display all the things we went over earlier. Should we go through them all now? Yeah, we'll go through a few. Uh, all right. What should we go through first? An alcohol? Um, no. Should we go down what we, what we had before at the start? So there's an alkane, alkene, okay. then so hydrogen alkanes first. Oh, yes, it was. So that we did an alkane, we did, we did butane, that looks like this. It does. So right up again here. Looks like that. It is. And if we have an alkene, was the next one down in the list, and we've just drawn it. Looks like this. If it's if it's butene. Yeah. What be one e. Then when you start to get side chains, you literally add on the side chains because this only eliminates the hydrogens. It does. So if you had a side chain, say on the second carbon. Yep. Should I here? Yep. And that'd be the side chain. And because you always count the longest. That chain of cartons. You have work. to mention what this side chain is by putting it up there. So if this was a chlorine on the second carbon, you'd have to put Cl up here. You would. And that would represent that there's a chlorine coming off the second carbon. It would. Now what's after the halogen alkanes on our list? It's alcohols. Yeah. Now the OH can be at the end or in the middle. Doesn't matter. So we've really. got we've got our butane. Should we imagine we have the OH at the end because that's normally where it is? It would be like this. So an O, you need to put the O, then that represents that the end isn't a carbon, so it's not yeah. pentane, it is still butane, to an O. You need to make sure the outer stick goes to the O and the H goes next to it. Like this. With a stick in between the O and the H. The book often misses out the stick, but in an exam it, you can lose a mark for not having that bond. Yeah. It's important. Next was, um, was it aldehydes, I think? I think it was aldehydes. I think it was aldehydes. That's where there's a double bonded O at the end. Yeah. So if we have butane, like that, you don't have to put the H, you just put double bonded O. Again, if you miss out the O, it will be assumed there's a carbon there, so make sure you put the O. Yeah. Um, so that would be butanol. Then we had the aldehyde. No, the ketone, ketone sorry. If there's any aldehyde. aldehyde. So, that's the way of a double bonded thing somewhere in the middle. So that would just be like this. Right there. Here, but... And finally, oh, we had a carboxylic acid, which is a double bond to O, two OH at the end. Yep. So if we have butane at the end, you'd have double bond to an O, to OH, a double bond to an O, as Triv said. Yep. And that's how you express things in skeletal form, which is a new it thing. Is. I think it's a much nicer way to write them, in fact. Yes. It takes much less time. I think it's simpler to see the longest chain. And if you're looking to pursue chemistry in any way, you'll probably do stuff about medicines, in which case nearly everything will be skeletal because that would be a nightmare yeah, for stuff like paracetamol. But sometimes in the exam they do do what we did earlier, which I'll very briefly mention. So we had our butane again. They might write something like that, there, yes. and then you have to do what we do, keep it all in the same formula or form. Yes, and you and have, have to write sticks. off in skeletal form what's happening there, yeah. basically. I think this covers all the skeletal bits. Yes, um, this is it for part one of the video. We're not going to yeah. do a summary now, we're going to do it at the end of part four, because this is a hefty chapter. This is a really big chapter. So, so part two up. continues in the book, logically. Right. Nice summarism. Okay.